Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we're going to do a special episode of Show and Tell. We are at the auction and I bought this here book for your 2002 through 2005 Dodge light duty and heavy duty pickups. And wouldn't you know it, the damn book came with the truck too. This here is a 2003 Ram 3500 4x4 with the dual rear wheels. Um, I wasn't really looking for this. We went up to the auction house to drop off a bunch of stuff and it was sitting there. And I made the mistake of going over and looking in the window. Window, pardon me. And I saw that it was a stick shift and I thought, hey, that's pretty cool. So uh, then I got looking at it a little further and I could see this truck, there's no rust on this truck anywhere, like anywhere. Usually these things, there's holes in the back bumper, the, the tailgate, this line here, that's usually where, how much of the tailgate is missing. The sides of the box rot out, the, the cab corners, the rockers, the bottom of the doors, these things are terrible rust buckets. And this thing, there's no rust anywhere. And I thought, ah, it's been all fixed up and repainted, you know? But then I get looking and you see this stuff here? That's rust proofing. That's uh, crown or rust check, you know? So I open up the door and look at that. All those crown stickers. And I said, hey, this is probably a pretty darn nice truck. It's got miles on it. It's got uh, 386,000 um, kilometers. So that's... Uh, uh 60 60 60 180 and another 80 another 50 it's probably got about 240,000 miles on it which really for these trucks is is kind of nothing so long as they've been um looked after so let's go on a little tour of it and i'll show you uh what i know about it this is absolutely as found i haven't cleaned it i haven't turned a screw on it we haven't done anything to it so uh this is our our blank canvas It's a Laramie, which in 2003 was the top trim level. Since then, they've added the Longhorn and the Limited. But in, in 2003, Laramie was, was top dog. Um, you'll also see that it's a six-speed, not a five-speed. That means it's got the uh, 305 horsepower high output 5.9 Cummins in it. Um, if it had a five-speed or an automatic, that would mean it was the, I think, 250 horse standard output coming. So the, the 305 horse engine was only available with the new Venture 5600 six-speed tranny. Um, you can see here, we'll open the door. Yeah, there it is, 386,000 kilometers. Um, it's got a pyro gauge on it, which is exhaust temperature. Although driving home, I realize it, it doesn't work. We'll have a look at that. Um, I don't know if I really need that. These pillar pods, I, I've never been a fan of those. But it's there, so if, if we can make it work, we'll make it work. Um, yeah, so let's start um, under the hood, I guess. Pop it. You can see the, the rust proofing. It's just, it's everywhere. Um, before I start working on it, I'm probably going to give the thing a good power wash. And we'll, uh, we'll uh, restart the rust proofing, you know. Start, kind of start from scratch. It, uh, I did notice that it keeps killing the batteries. So we're going to have a go at that. I got to uh, 17 is the date code on them. So they're five years old. I kind of think it's got like a parasitic drag on it. As you can see here, it's had um, so many extras and doodads and stuff all added to it over the years. Who knows what this stuff is. We're just going to take all that crap out and we're going to check it for, we're going to check it for a draw and see what we can find out. I'm gonna load test these two batteries and we'll go from there. This here is your 24 valve 59 Cummins. High output. We'll, uh, we'll just get this thing cleaned up. Uh, it looks like the valve cover gasket is leaking. So we'll maybe fix that up. We're gonna give it a nice oil change. Make sure all the filters and everything are good in it. Um, I'm gonna put, uh, under the hood here anyway, I'm gonna put a water pump. We're going to do all the hoses and uh, a belt. Just make sure that we, we don't have any, any worries going down the road, you know? Yeah. 
It's got the tow hooks. It's going to need a set of tires. You can see here they've got they've got cracks in the sidewall, even though the even though the uh, the tread is good. They're just really really old tires. Um, the brakes. I'm not too sure about the brakes. Uh, we'll see when we get the wheels off, but I've got them on my list as just because I can't see them. I figured we'll just go ahead and, and change them. Uh, look at all that rust proofing. Holy Toledo. Wow. Uh, you can see here, it still has the, um, for you Cummins guys, it's still got the original lift pump on the side of the fuel filter. We'll uh, upgrade that somewhere down the road. There's gonna be lots of videos on this truck. Somebody's added the full flared out running boards on it. Look at this, like look at the bottom of that door. That's just spectacular for one of these trucks. Uh, it's got one really nice tire on it, this one. At least it's got one, eh? These mud flaps on the back here, they're kinda, kinda goofy. We'll probably uh, do something with that. We'll get rid of stuff like this. I, I don't. I never liked stuff like that. The tailgate's got a big, big kiss in the top of it. We'll see what we can do about that. Uh, in the back of it here, you can see it's been linexed. It's got a big Reese fifth wheel. It's got the the gooseneck, the gooseneck hitch. It's got this some kind of goofy ball mount. It's got a bunch of extra hubcaps. Uh, it's hard to see up at the front there, but it's got a great big um, auxiliary diesel fuel tank in it. The one bad thing with this rust proofing stuff is it does this. It swells up your, your plastic and rubber parts. <laughs> That's okay. We can probably get one of those at the junkyard. This stuff is all the same as a 1500. You know, back in the days when this truck was made, the 1500 and the, and the heavy duties had, had pretty much the same the same body. Uh, also over here, something that's wanged, wanged into this and, and pulled it all away. We'll see if we can get that fixed up. We're gonna put six new tires on it. The uh, the spare tire is missing completely. The um, the little cable winch, the little cable winch that holds it up is, is busted off and gone. You can see a little rust up there because they've not, um, when I get my trucks oil sprayed, I lower the spare down so they can they can oil spray it up in there, but they didn't on this one. You can see there it's got a set of um, airlift uh, airbags. It's got a complete front to back MBRP exhaust on it. Uh, it's got 373 gears. Four tens were optional, but they weren't. Um, this truck is not optioned with the four tens. It's it's got the 373, but it does have the anti spin axle. They at least ordered that. It's got this aluminum uh, aluminum toolbox in it. Nothing in it. See here in the back seat. Oh, it's got a set of a flare kit for the side of the road. Uh, oh, it's got husky mats in it. That's good. Front and rear husky mats. You can see here it's got the um, it's got under seat under seat storage. And there is the um, there's the compressor for the air ride. Although it doesn't seem to work, we have to we have to figure that out. But it's uh, I'll tell you what, this is a nice truck. It's a Laramie, so it's got eight way power seats on both sides. It's got um, like my fourth gens. It's got, oh look, it comes with a, uh, a dash gun. It's got all this stuff. This one's old enough, there's uh, no USB. I don't think there's even a, a 120 volt outlet in it. Does this come up? Yep. There's more stuff in there. Yes. And I don't know what the heck that's from. It belongs to something. Uh, the other glory with this is that right now, I mean, these third gen Rams, this, Scrap yards are just, just teeming with them. There's rows and rows of them in there. Uh, here's all our manuals and stuff. That's good. 
Oh, it only has one glove box. I think the newer trucks have two. I may be wrong. There's our equipment plate. You can see here, it's there's not too much, not too much stuff on here because it's a Laramie. It's pretty much loaded up with everything. So the only real options on here are any spin differential. That's about it. It doesn't have a sunroof or, or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, Manly Motors in Lindsay. I, I bought a van from there. 2003 diesel truck. Very nice. Welcome package for your NV5600. That's good. So this, um, as far as Ram, you know, diesel trucks go, there's there's certain ones that are uh, kind of what you would call holy grail, holy grail trucks. My old, my old gray one, the 93 with the uh, five nine five speed club cab, four by four and the gray interior that was like a holy grail truck and uh this one is also 03 and uh early 04 trucks had the 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 24 valve Cummins without any emissions controls at all whatsoever on them um so none of your egr dpf all of that stuff it's it does have electronic fuel injection and they do run a lot cleaner than the old 12 valves but they don't have all that extra after treatment stuff on them and uh and being in the third gen truck which is uh you know depending on who you talk to uh, uh a pretty big improvement on the second gen truck everybody everybody loves these so this this was absolutely a score so we've got uh you know a uh, quad cab dually four by four with a with a high output five nine and a six speed. Uh, that makes this a holy grail truck. Uh, usual Dodge stuff. The dash is all is all cracked. Uh, and unlike unlike the um, the second gens where this piece comes off and you can replace it, I think on these third gens this is actually the whole dash. So we'll see what we got to do about that. There are some companies that make uh, a cover that glues over top of this. Or we'll, uh, if we really like the truck, I may spring. The actual part is still available at the dealer. Uh, I mean, this one lasted 20 years. I may just just replace the, the entire thing if I can still get the part. Time will tell. Anyway, let's uh, do our operational stuff. You know, we'll start it up, drive it around a bit. See, this is all the kind of stuff that we'll have to work on. Stuff like this just, just drives me insane. You wonder why the battery goes dead when the truck sits overnight, eh? And these Husky liners, eh, they're not bad, but we'll, we'll see if they stay or not. I kind of think that, that the, I've got a set of fourth gen factory slush mats that look to me like they would kind of fit inside these, which might be nice. We also need to replace the seat foam in the front seats before the the covers start to before the covers start to get really bad. They are heated seats and the heat in them still works. That's good. So well, you can actually buy. Um, there's aftermarket companies that make heavy duty seat foams for them. So we'll get uh, we'll get those and fix them up. There's switches everywhere. Like what does this do? Oh oh, it's got some really hokey air horns on it. That that'll be going. I'll tell you. That. And then little things like this. I mean, we'll have to get see if we can get this piece at the scrapyard. And while we're changing it, we'll address this tiny little bit of rust here. Little stuff like that. But that sure is better than doing cab corners and rockers, eh? We also have to fix these um, the hinge pins on this left front door. So let's crank it up. Let the glow plugs up. There we are. So this is what they call uh, a common rail. On the second gen trucks, they had the 24 valve engine, but it had an, an inline uh, mechanical injection pump. This one uses um, a common rail, a common rail injection system that can get up to approximately 30,000 PSI in the in the rail and then the injectors are operated electronically it's got cool old school 
early 2000s AM FM cassette CD it's got uh, the infinity system so it's got the amplifier and seven speakers throughout the cab it does sound really nice it's got the overhead uh, trip computer little lights All right yeah mirror that's not lit, lit, lit no mirror on this one it's got um, it's new enough that it's got airbags it's got side curtain airbags it's got I think it's got airbags in the seats it's um, it's got pretty much all you need uh, electric transfer case it's got um, dual zone you know dual zone temperature control it's just a nice truck radio sounds pretty good doesn't sound as good as the uh, the Alpine system in my fourth gens but it's it's pretty darn good you can see here is the uh, there's the control for the air ride you can see the gauges going up Put about 20 in them and let's go see if that lifted up the back of the truck any oh yeah it lifted it up probably a, an inch or two and it's solid as a rock back here I probably won't be driving around with those inflated And then I guess you, you, yeah, you balance them out from here. So if you've got an, a misbalanced load, you can blow them both up and then uh, let them down. So I'm going to let them both down to 10. There we go. We're learning about this truck together. I can't wait to get it in the shop and get it cleaned up and get wheels off and stuff and see how bad it is. I think I'm going to relocate this though. That drives me nuts sitting there. This CB work. Yeah. Lights up anyway. The parking brake even works on this thing. It just needs to be adjusted up a bit. Who knows what other switches and stuff we'll find in here. <laughs> the other thing I miss from my fourth gen is the exhaust brake, but we can add one. There's a few upgrades we'll be wanting to do on this. Um, like I said, an exhaust brake. I want to get the brackets. Deb and me are thinking we want to get a, a slide-in camper for it. And we can go do camping and stuff with it. Um, instead of driving the old Ford with the 460. Pretty cool, eh? Let's get out and see how she sounds. Whoops, wrong handle. Uh, hood we want. There we go. It's also got a Takancha Prodigy brake controller. We'll hook a trailer up to it and see if that works. Well, it seems like it's doing something, eh? There's the sending unit for our exhaust uh, temperature gauge. But like I said, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. So it may be dead or maybe driving it home from the auction house. I just didn't get it warm enough. Who knows? We'll get into it.
Uh, I did find out the air conditioning works, the heated seats work, everything works. Like everything in this truck works. It's it's amazing, really. I can't be back here listening to this and wing the throttle at the same time, but you'll have to take my word for it. It uh, it sounds good when you wing the throttle and. Uh, Sorry, this is not a scratch and sniff video, but I can also assure you it smells good. It smells like my old first gen. Wonder if the lights work. Let's go for a walk. Uh, clearance lights work. Just got one odd one. Uh, the headlights definitely need buffing. Oh, fog lights. Yeah. This is awesome. It just keeps getting better. Yeah, good. Both license plate lights even work. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun doing this one up. I'm also going to... Um, you can buy uh, fourth gen style mirrors with the, with the turn signals and the puddle lights in them that fit the third gen truck. I saw them on Amazon. And lots of guys buy them and they, they like them. So they're not just um, a cheap piece of crap. We'll do that to it. Uh, we'll just do some stuff to it. You'll have to, uh, you'll have to uh, bear with us. We're going to get to it. And there will be lots of videos about this truck. I've always wondered what it would be like to live with a, with a dually. So uh, we're going to find out. Yeah, the body needs a little, you know, lots of little stone chips and stuff on it, but uh, we'll get it all fixed up. I'm going to get rid of those uh, stainless arches. I do not like those. Uh, we got to make the clearance lights all the same. We're going to get rid of this, this terrible window film job on the front windows. We'll get rid of that. Um, this too is an add-on. I don't like it. Gone. We'll, we'll get this thing spiffy, spiffy, spiffy. That's good. One of the last things I wanted to check, uh, all the dash lights work. It's not like my fourth gen with all the cruise control buttons on the steering wheel and the door handles and everything light, lighting up. But it's, uh, you know, for the vintage of this thing, it's not bad. Well, that's a wrap on that one. The one thing I do know I need for sure before I do anything else uh, it needs two batteries. It was dead when I, when I went up there at the auction and I just figured somebody left the dome light on or something, but we drove it all the way home from there and it's been running and stuff all day around here. And I left it sit for half an hour and it's completely dead again. So I got to run up to town tomorrow, get, uh, two new batteries for it. And, uh, well, we'll go from there. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I hope you'll join us uh, as we make all our videos about our new Project Dually. And uh, until we meet again, this is Kevin checking out from the Claremont Classic Garage. So long for now.